Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So check this out, another reason to be bullish on crypto. This from Kaleo here on Twitter. This is your last reminder that every single time Bitcoin has broken out of a major HTF bearish resistance versus the NDX, it's had a face-melting rally follow. I have a hard time believing this time is going to be any different. So an interesting chart here, the BTC USD uh, slash NDQ chart. Just making note of the bearish resistance breaking through that, that, what that translates to making the first higher high on the chart. But we've seen this now when comparing BTC to NDQ. And so what is that? The NASDAQ composite index. Take a look at this, guys. First time it happened was back in here. And if I uh, just compare it here on the Bitcoin chart, you guys can see that would have been in and around here. Got Bitcoin up here on the daily. So with regards to Bitcoin in terms of price of USD, you can't see it. But uh, when compared to the NASDAQ, it did break out. Obviously, what that resulted in was a rally from, uh, when was this time here? If I just uh, throw that on there. So about mid-March 2015, if you guys can see down there. And then the rally followed. Sometimes this does take a while, though. Uh, and I feel like uh, it's probably going to be the same in this particular case. We met that high about 127 days later. And then it took about 235 days before we actually broke that high. So that, in fact, brought us to late October 2015. The second time that that occurred was uh, in and around here. The breakout in and around here, we went up 219% as per Kaleo's chart. So that would have been in and around here. The breakout would have been roughly in there, the breakout. And then quickly after that, we moved upwards. Uh, we came back down, of course, this black swan event, the beer flu. Uh, what happened next? Uh, over here, the breakout against this capitulation area, another significant rally to the upside after we saw that. And now, guys, we are in and around here, breaking out against bearish resistance. It has signaled a bull run in the past. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin, obviously the leader of the pact, altcoins will, in fact, follow. So I'm feeling very optimistic now. We've seen uh, several indicators that are suggesting that we are starting a bull run. I know the sentiment in the crypto space, not very positive right now, but uh, you know, this is always how it starts off uh, with the regulatory clarity, teething pains that we're going through in the United States. I talked a little bit about this this morning. I will link that video up here if you guys didn't catch it. A secret source from a reliable interviewer has given us some insight on what is happening next. So we've got Bitcoin here. Uh, right now it's trading at about 22,700, but again, uh, not too much movement for the King Crypto. Over the last day, we have seen uh, some positive movement to the upside. And that has generally been the trend in the in the rest of the crypto industry. We've got XRP up a little bit too, closer to 39 cents today. Uh, it was down around 36, 37. So this is looking fairly positive. And, uh, you know, I'm glad we're seeing indicators to suggest that there are other reasons why we should be positive on crypto right now. Is it of any surprise to you that we are hearing stories like this? Billionaire George Soros' fund dives deeper on crypto bets. This coming from DJ Peter Vass. So loading up on cryptocurrency, and again, I always have to check these dates because I feel like, you know, we, we hear about this every so often and I just want to make sure that this is an up-to-date article. Sure enough, this was from yesterday, February the 14th. Soros's fund management, the investment vehicle of hedge fund billionaire George Soros, appears to have added exposure to some crypto companies before the end of last year, although the nature of the trades is not clear. According to the 13F filing with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission dated December 31st, Soros' fund management purchased $39.6 million worth of convertible debentures of crypto miner Marathon Digital Holdings. This is a crypto miner. So despite the ESG, the, the climate push uh, from uh, you know the, the crypto industry and government and whoever else, he's investing in a miner. Hmm. Convertible debentures are a type of long-term debt issued by a company that can be converted into a stock after a special period of time. Uh, the fund was also showing ownership of call options and put options of 50,000 shares of MicroStrategy. Uh, Soros's fund three months earlier disclosed uh, only put, put, uh, put options on uh, 50,000 shares in addition to those common stock bets and hedges. The fund continued to hold nearly $200 million in MicroStrategy preferred shares. So a big bet on crypto, a big bet on Bitcoin, particularly things that make you go, hmm, Bitcoin guys, not going anywhere anytime soon. And so, you know, again, probably a very good time to buy. Where are we right now? Uh, off its high. Bitcoin is down uh, nearly 66% now off its high. We did see it uh, as low as 77.5% at the absolute low. But, uh, you know, we still might see some retracements down below 50,000. 
Um, I would be cost averaging if you guys are interested in the King Crypto. Wanted to keep moving along and uh, first wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for posting that. Mike Manfield here with regards to Ripple partner Finastra. Now these guys are a huge partner and they are exploring the sale of their banking business. Get this, fintech giant Finastra could be ready to sell its universal banking business for up to $7 billion. The company owned by Vista Equity Partners is working with a financial advisor as it gears up for a sales process in the coming weeks. However, talks are at an early stage. The unit makes about $1.7 billion in revenue and $500 million EBITDA, according to people familiar with the matter. Uh, Finastra was created in 2017 when Vista acquired Canadian payment firm DNH and merged with its core banking player, Misses. So that is very, very interesting. Ripple partner Finastra uh, looking to actually offload its banking solution. I know Finastra does a lot. So, uh, you know, maybe they want to put their focus on other portions of their business. Anyway, some interesting Ripple partner news there. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. I also happen to see this guy's from the Wrath of Kahneman. Lend trade matches loan buyers and sellers. They have produced a document about blockchain, which highlights Ripple's cost savings with ODL. So in this document, it's a fairly old document from 2019, but what's interesting here is that it was just recently uploaded. Okay, so they talk about ODL here, labeled XRAPID, and they cite old insights blogs, but then Wrath of Kahneman notices something interesting. Seems to have been created in 2019, but uploaded today. So here is the document, guys. Just the PDF you guys can see up here, uh, the Lend Trade White Paper 2019. Wrath of Kahneman, though, just recently found this document. It was not online before this, yet they happen to decide to upload it today. The removal of middlemen services, lower costs for companies, not just in processing fees, but overhead as well. Smart contracts can replace cumbersome legal processes and expenses, and blockchain identification systems can provide secure alternatives to centralized databases, which in turn could lower the chances of data breaches and therefore the costs associated with hacks. Then down here, Ripple, a currency exchange, settlements and remittance company, reported that companies piloting its X-Rapid platform for international money transfers saw cross-border transaction times drop from days to seconds. Ripple also reported a 40 to 70% reduction in transaction costs amongst the businesses using XRapid, which has now been uh, relabeled since then as ODL or on-demand liquidity. So interesting to note that from Lentrade, I also find it interesting that they uh, have labeled Ripple a currency exchange. When I would consider it more of a remittance company or fintech company, really, that, you know, does cross-border payments and, I mean, can exchange currency, but... Would you consider them a currency exchange? An interesting observation here, maybe, uh, you know, at that time in 2019, it wasn't as clear for a lot of these partners as to what exactly Ripple was up to. We know they have come out with a slew of products since then. So an interesting observation here. Why was it uploaded today? Hmm. Anyway, I wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman uh, just for bringing that to our attention. Uh, I also happen to see this. Ripple committed to $1 million in XRP to support NGOs providing earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria. So we know the earthquake occurred uh, just last week over there and Ripple coming out supporting the relief effort. Uh, good on them through the Relief Fund, uh, which is crypto for charity. They're donating $250,000 USD in XRP and will also match two to one all crypto donations here. So if you guys uh, do want to contribute to this, Ripple will be matching your donation. Ripple Impact Earthquake Relief, all crypto donations to this fund will support four of the leading NGOs providing humanitarian aid in Turkey and Syria following the devastating earthquakes that have killed thousands of people. And Ripple will match all crypto donations two to one. So not only will they uh, match your donation, they will double it uh, up to $750,000 USD. Any unmet match amount will be donated. So guys, the details are here and I will link this in the description of the video. You can even uh, donate crypto if you uh, so choose. So uh, some great news here. Obviously, Ripple does take this kind of thing seriously. The fund support for NGOs uh, and donations are distributed equally. Uh, and then here are some of the organizations. They are helping affected communities in Syria and Turkey by providing immediate cash, basic items such as household kits, dignity kits for women and girls, hygiene supplies and more. Uh, and then these organizations here, Chefs for Turkey, uh, WC Kitchen and Chef Jose Anders, they're distributing hot meals in Turkey and Syria. They work with field kitchens, local chefs and restaurants and food trucks to feed survivors and first responders. Our hearts go out to those impacted by these earthquakes. And we are grateful to the first responders and NGOs working tirelessly to save lives and bring relief. So, you know, that is the latest how Ripple is contributing to the relief effort in Turkey and Syria. Uh, so great news there. And again, I will link this in the description if you guys uh, do want to, in fact, donate there. 
Another piece of news with regards to Nomura. Nomura, for those of you guys who may not remember, part of the Japanese banking consortium that has committed to utilizing Ripple and XRP. Well, now they've invested in a hybrid finance company called Infinity. Nomura's digital asset subsidiary, Laser Digital, has invested in Infinity, a decentralized finance or DeFi protocol for institutional lending and borrowing. Founded by ex-Morgan Stanley head of structuring Kevin Laposi, uh, Inf Infinity offers an interest rate protocol that forms the basis for benchmark rates and institutional grade lending, borrowing, and risk management in DeFi. Infinity's wholesale exchange provides inter-exchange clearing, fixed and floating rate markets, uh, as well as enterprise grade risk management utilizing hybrid on-chain and off-chain infrastructures. The investment by Nomura's Laser Digital marks a concerted advance by traditional investment banks into the institutional DeFi or hybrid finance space. So, you know, traditional banks, they're obviously looking for a way into a hybrid finance space, maybe, you know, moving uh, slower than, you know, just kind of jumping all at once on blockchain and DLT technology. Here's a quote, though, down here. Infinity is building critical infrastructure for DeFi and its protocol, enabling price discovery and management of risk within DeFi and its transformative for institutions. This coming from Oliver Dang, head of ventures at Laser Digital, which which is the, uh, the sister company of Nomura. Infinity's groundwork paves the way for institutional flows on chain, new levels of rates and risks, innovation, and we are keen to support their advances in the hybrid finance space. So again, down here, combining decentralized and centralized finance. And I feel like, you know, this is probably how a lot of these companies feel comfortable getting into DeFi, I guess. It's such a brand new concept. Uh, they, here they say they want to tap into the scalability of on-chain transactions by using off-chain risk management and computing. This enables practitioners to access blockchain efficiencies while still retaining enterprise-grade risk management. And, um, you know, we, we might see this happen very slowly. It might not be one big bang effect and then poof, everybody is on DLT technology. I feel like that's what we're kind of seeing already with ISO 20022. The beginning of the integration is starting uh, next month, March 2023. But, you know, we're not really going to see everybody be on board until November. I think it's November of 2025, if I'm not mistaken. That is the final deadline. That is, uh, you know, when all this stuff is moving to a new standard ISO 20022 running on DLT technology. So, you know, some of these companies, this one in particular, committed to running on Ripple and XRP through that Japanese banking consortium. They're delving into a new hybrid finance uh, protocol here, partnering up with Infinity. So I uh, do wonder how this is going to progress. Anyway, some great news here coming out of Japan. We always get great news coming out of Japan, though. Always Ripple and XRP friendly. Also wanted to bring you guys this from TikTok. A little bit of fun in this video. A new like by David Schwartz. All aboard, Plan XRP here posted this, noticing that David Schwartz liked this tweet. Again, having a little bit of fun with this XRP journey, first class ticket, international blockchain rails, good for XRP ledger transactions, subject to transaction costs, non-refundable. This represents one XRP drop. And I mean, if one ticket were to equate to 0 .000001 of an XRP, I just thought, let's have some fun with this. What is the average train ticket? And this is obviously going to vary depending on where you are. The average train ticket costs about $128 on the top routes. And even the cheapest ticket available is only $11. Well, if $11 were the cheapest train ticket, and you only had to pay 0 .000001 of an XRP for that ticket. Does that mean that one XRP would be worth $11 million? What the heck is David Schwartz telling us, guys? This is just for fun. By no means am I suggesting that one XRP is going to be worth $11 million per coin. What I do know is that the train has left the station. Rosie Rios' famous line, an XRP a first-class cryptocurrency that is leading innovation and will be transformative to global finance. That is just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.